Welcome to our discussion on meiosis. Now, this term sounds a lot like the term mitosis. However, they are completely separate, independent processes that just happen to sound somewhat similar. Now, meiosis is how we produce sperm and egg cells, gametes. It's how we produce gametes. Meiosis is somewhat like nature's amazing way of shuffling a deck of genetic cards to create unique offspring. It's a special type of cell division that reduces the number of chromosomes in a cell by half, resulting in four new cells, four daughter cells, each with a unique set of chromosomes. This is in stark contrast to the usual cell division, mitosis or binary fission, where cells divide to produce identical copies of each other. Meiosis is all about diversity. So when does meiosis happen? It kicks in during the production of gametes. That's science speak for egg and sperm cells. In humans, and other animals, it's a key part of sexual reproduction. In plants, fungi, and some protists, meiosis is also crucial, but might happen at different life cycle stages. Let's break down what meiosis kind of looks like in a biological male compared to a biological female. So in biological males, meiosis takes place after puberty. All right, and so where? It takes place in diploid cells that are within the testes of the biological male. So you have diploid cells within the testes that undergo meiosis one to produce those initial two haploid cells, and then meiosis two to eventually produce those final sperm cells in the testes. And this all takes place after puberty. In contrast though, in females, Meiosis begins during the fetal stage when a series of diploid cells enter meiosis 1. And at the conclusion of meiosis 1, the process comes to a brief pause or a halt, and the cells gather in the ovaries. Then at puberty, meiosis resumes. One cell at the end of meiosis 1 enters meiosis 2 each month. And the result of meiosis 2 is actually a single egg per cycle because the other meiotic cells disintegrate and each egg cell contains 23 chromosomes and is haploid. Make sense? So that's when meiosis occurs, but now I want to take just a brief second and reel it back in and just clarify the what. The what of meiosis. What is it? Meiosis is the word that we have labeled to describe the process of taking a diploid cell and having that diploid cell go through two rounds of cellular division to produce a haploid cell that is genetically different from the original parent cell. With more specificity, we are looking at germ cells. Germ cells are specialized cells that are destined to undergo meiosis to produce gametes, right? So sperm and eggs, if we're looking at animals, or if we're looking at plant cells, we're talking about pollen and ovules. These germ cells are diploid, meaning they contain two sets of chromosomes, one set inherited from each biological parent. This contrasts with somatic cells, which make up the rest of the body and are involved in forming tissues and organs. Somatic cells also undergo cell division, but somatic cells go through mitosis because we want to keep our tissues and organs identical from their original cells, right? We want a stomach cell to produce more stomach cells. Germ cells are there to form something else through the process of meiosis, specifically gametes. This distinction is crucial because somatic cells' primary role is to contribute to the growth and repair of the body, maintaining the organism's overall function. In contrast, germ cells have a unique role in reproduction, 
When germ cells undergo meiosis, they reduce their chromosome number by half, right? Producing haploid gametes, going from diploid to haploid. So in humans, as an example, we are going from 46 chromosomes in our germ cells. And then when those germ cells undergo meiosis, they will be down to only 23 chromosomes in each one of those daughter cells that is produced through meiosis. This halving is essential for sexual reproduction because it ensures that when the gametes, like an egg and a sperm, from two parents unite during fertilization, the resulting zygote has the correct diploid number of chromosomes, right? So let's say we have a biological male and a biological female. They both have germline cells that have 46 chromosomes each. If those two individuals were to reproduce and form a zygote with their germline cells, suddenly they would have 46 plus 46 chromosomes in one cell. That is way too many and that would not produce a viable offspring. It would not be viable. So the germline cells go through meiosis. So that way they end up with 23 chromosomes in each cell. Now, when the cell, the gamete from the biological male and the gamete from the biological female fuse together and become a zygote, they have 23 plus 23 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes in total in that zygote, the correct number for a human cell. All right, so restoring the number to what it was in the original germ cells. So in summary, the parent cell of meiosis is a diploid germ cell, not a somatic cell, setting the stage for the production of haploid gametes necessary for sexual reproduction. So that's kind of the what. The what of it is that we are taking germ cells and through a process making gametes that are all genetically different from each other as well as genetically different from the original parent cell. So circling back, why is meiosis so important? Well, it's the reason you are not a clone of your biological mother or biological father. During meiosis, chromosomes from each biological parent get mixed and matched in new ways through processes called crossing over and independent assortment. This genetic shuffling ensures that each gamete, and therefore each offspring, is genetically unique. This diversity is crucial for evolution and survival, helping populations adapt to changing environments and resist diseases. In a nutshell, meiosis is nature's way of keeping life diverse and interesting, ensuring that from generation to generation, no two individuals, except for identical twins, are exactly alike. 